Hi everyone, welcome to the production environment tutorial for iClone 5. Here you're going to learn all about how to take advantage of all the unique UI features of iClone, as well as learn some shortcuts and hotkeys along the way. Let's start off by introducing the navigation pane at the top. Here are a number of tabs that contain different content. The stage tab includes most of your larger scene elements such as terrains and atmospheres, and here is also where you set lighting effects and shading for your scene. In the Set tab, you'll find all of your scene props, everything from simple spheres and squares to particle effects, trees, water, and skies. In the Actor tab, you'll find all of the different properties for the character, such as upper and lower body, skin, etc. You can customize all of the properties to make your actor look completely different. The Head tab is the exact same thing, but focused only on the head properties, such as the eyes and facial shape. In the Animation tab, you have all of your animation tools for both face and body. Select the different sections to toggle between each animation type. In the Media section, you'll find all of your images to use for textures, backgrounds, etc., as well as video files. You can put your own frequently used iClone media content here as well. The export section is where you'll export your project into any number of different formats once it's done. Ok, what I'm going to do now is just add in another prop to my scene. You can do this by clicking and dragging to a specific location. When the crate is in, you will see arrows coming from all sides. This is called the gizmo, and it means you are in the mode now where you can move your object, but not the camera. Now let's zoom into the crate using the zoom function. I can press Z or use the zoom tool to move in. Once I'm far enough in, I can use the pan function or press the X key to pan around. For orbiting, I can click and drag using the right mouse key or use the orbit tool. Beside the orbit tool, you'll see camera view, which means once you have an object selected, you can view it from many different angles here. You can also use the home row keys on your keyboard. If you want to center the object on your screen, use the center tool. Now back to the prop movement options. You can double click your prop from camera movement mode to switch to prop movement mode. If your gizmo isn't on, just press Ctrl Q. Here you can move your prop uniformly in any direction using the gizmo arrows. The square boxes will move on both X and Y axes in that direction. Use the E hotkey to switch to rotation mode or press R to switch to scale mode where you can change the size of your prop in any number of dimensions by using the gizmo. Icon 5 has a mini viewport which you can activate on the toolbar or by pressing F8. You can change its screen position and size as well. On the right of the toolbar are multiple duplicate, full screen, preview, and the physics tools, which we won't go into here. Now over on the left hand side, you'll see the content manager. You can resize the windows here by clicking and dragging on the border. You can also change the display type like you see me doing here. If you want to see more of the scene manager or the content manager, you can minimize either by clicking the button on the top right of each window. And if you want more space for your work area, you can minimize the entire panel, or resize it by clicking and dragging on the edges as well. If I ever want to undo any action I've done, I can simply use the Ctrl Z hotkey, or else click the undo button at the top left, near the content manager. There's also the Redo button to repeat actions. Under the toolbar, you'll see the Camera Selection menu. If I select Add Camera, you will see where the mini viewport comes in handy. When I rotate the camera that I just added, you'll see the preview window in the bottom will remain stationary, as it is a different camera view than what I have selected. I can also select the type of view that I want with various steps of detail from wireframe to pixel shading. If your scene is really heavy with props and polygons, 
you might want to consider going for a less detailed mode if you're editing to experience faster operation. I'm just going to zoom out here by holding down both mouse keys and dragging out, then demonstrate some click and drag. If I open my explore window, I can select any one of these items in the window and drag it onto my scene. Once I do, it will automatically apply to any object I drag it onto. Here I'm dragging it onto the sky, so this image will replace the image of the sky that I already have in place. I'll undo that for now and demonstrate a different import method for images and videos. If I hold down control and click and drag the item in now, it will import as a prop which means I can rotate it and manipulate it like a prop. If I want to save any items on the screen as a prop, I can simply go to the Custom tab in the Scene Manager, and then press the Add key at the bottom. After that, I just need to name it and press Enter. Once I do that, I can click and drag my prop in from the Content Manager. If I have it selected, I can also hold down the control key and click and drag to make a new copy as well. Another trick I can do by holding control is multiple select. I'm holding down control now and clicking on the other props here so that they're all selected. Then I can delete them all at once. I can also drag any image onto my scene and apply it to a prop, like my helipad here. Once I do, the prop material will be replaced with the image. If I want to find out where my new prop file has been saved, I can click on the Find File button at the top of the Content Manager, and my Explorer window will pop up with the file. Ok, let's go down to the Play bar now. I'll zoom in a little on the scene and just press Play. You'll see the time scrub progress along the timeline. If I want to make the total time in my scene shorter, the easiest way is to click and drag the project limit indicator at the far right of the time scrub. You'll see when I do this and play back, it will stop at the limit that I set. I can go back to the beginning or the end of my project by selecting the respective buttons on the play bar as well. I can also progress frame by frame. On the right of the play bar, you can open up the timeline, and there's another button which will remove all the animation in the scene. You can also decide if you want your timeline to display frames or real time, and the length limit of your project. If I enter in 500 frames, you'll see the project limit indicator will move. Ok, now for the modify panel to the right. Each prop will have different modify properties, so let's take a look at the character first. You'll see when I select my character, the Animation tab will open. Here you'll see different options in the Modify panel for facial animation. If you look at the drop down menu at the top of the panel, you can shortcut to different sections of that panel. If I want to modify my character's appearance, I can go to the Actor tab. You'll see the Modify panel has many different options now, and some have a hotkey indicated beside them. This means that you can press those keys to skip to that section of the Modify panel. I can also minimize the Modify panel to the right as well, the same way I did with the Content Manager. I'll briefly open up the timeline here now. I can use the option in the Play Bar area, or simply press F3. I can click and drag the timeline around anywhere, as you see here. And if I want to make it longer, I can simply click and drag the edges. If I double click on the timeline, it will embed itself into the bottom of the icon window. If you want to move through your frames quickly, you can use the white time scrub here. And if you want to open up any of your prop, character or motion tracks, just click them. Let's take a look at the right click menu now. If I right click on my character, you'll see most of the tools and commands are available in this menu, such as transform, character appearance, as well as perform. I can use the Look At feature from this menu to get my character to look at the crate to his left.
I can also apply a perform motion here. This laugh will cut off because my project length is only about 180 frames. I'm going to drag my time scrub here to go back to frame 0. Once more, I'm going to use the control copy function here to create three copies of this crate in order to show you the hierarchy in the scene manager to the left. You can see that once that's done, I can select each item in the scene manager and it will highlight in my project window. If I want to create a hierarchy, I need to attach my crates to one another. I can do this with the right click menu or I can go into the modify panel to the right and select pick parent, then select the parent object. You'll see now that one of my crates will move down in the scene hierarchy. You can create as many levels of hierarchy as you need. If I move the lowest item on the hierarchy, it will move by itself. But if I select the parent object and move it, the rest will follow along. I can also hide any of my objects by toggling the Show Hide checkbox. The hierarchy will also determine which are shown and which are hidden. If I have a really complex scene, I can filter objects out by using the Filter option at the top of the Scene Manager. If I deselect Prop, then all of my props will disappear from the Scene Manager. I can also sort them by alphabetical order or search for a specific prop. If I type in camera, it will select my scene camera. But I also have a security camera prop on my scene. So what I want to do is filter for props only and search again. Now you'll see a camera will be selected in my scene manager. If I use the home row keys I mentioned earlier, my camera will move to focus on that object. You can also see a button up at the top right here to access the city marketplace to buy iClone content. There's also a preference menu, which works to adjust all of your preferences in iClone, such as grid options, display options, etc. There are also a number of hotkeys to toggle these options on or off. And also your iClone help. Finally, there's also the tools menu at the top left here where you can pretty much find any of the tools you need without having to click through the tabs and sections. Well, that's about it for your introduction to the iClone 5 production environment. For further details, feel free to check the user interface section of the iClone 5 help.